Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now, this is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. I move on to the next subject. It's quick. It's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. Now, this week, I'm going to be back with another of my performer highlight five by fives. Now, this is where I play five pieces of performance footage from a magician uh, that I really respect. And I talk about what we can learn from watching them perform. Uh, these have been really popular recently. I've done Paul Daniels. I've done Wayne Dobson, Scott Alexander, Alan Hudson. And uh, this week, I'm, I'm concentrating on a legend. And I do not use that word lightly. This is somebody who is unfortunately no longer live with us. He's passed away, but I think his legacy lives on. He is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest magicians of all time um, and a huge inspiration to my magic. And I am, of course, talking about the one and only Tommy Wonder. Now, it was very difficult to pick five tricks from Tommy Wonder because he has so many wonderful moments of magic. He has so many particular signature pieces that are just very Tommy Wonder that are a perfect example of why he's so good and to try and um, bring that down to one particular or five particular videos was a very difficult task indeed however I think I've managed it I might have to do a follow-up video to this at some point in the future because I could do like a second and probably a third as well but this week we're going to be looking at the magic of Tommy Wonder and we're going to be talking about why Tommy Wonder is so good and what we can learn from watching Tommy Wonder perform and uh, it's going to start with uh, probably one of the most well-known Tommy Wonder tricks so we're going to start off by having a look at Tommy Wonder's two cup and ball routine. My friends I would like now to show you a classical trick of magic. So one of the oldest tricks in magic is called the cups and balls. I, oh, you already have seen verses on it. Oh, that's good. This one, it involves two little balls. They're both exactly the same, especially this one. <laughs> and two metal cups, good, strong, solid metal. Although this one, it can go through this one, and this one can go through that one, but that's not important. <laughs> These cups are only meant for covering the balls. Because if I cover the balls like that, I cannot touch them anymore. Well, because the, the metal, it prevents me uh, to do that, no? There's a cup over it, you can't touch it. Unless you take it through the tops of the cup, but that's the weak part. Okay. I'll show you how a little ball can come underneath this cup. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'll show you one more. Time. Yep, that's better. Anyway, you know, sometimes people ask me, is it possible to possible? Possible to pass a ball. And, uh, if you just do. Keep that there. And here, of course, there is nothing left. I should find some better glue for this one day. Yeah, um, yeah let's, let's continue. Let's continue. There's two little balls here. Now, then I would like you to point to one of them. That one or that one, whichever. That one? Okay. Hold it on your hand like this. Take it, yep. Like this. I will cover it with this cup so that I cannot touch it, yes? Now, you tell me when you feel it leave. Did you feel it leave? No? But. Ah, oh, you got the feel it. Oh. I'll show you, I'll show you how both of them can go through the cup together. Here they go, both of them together. You know why they don't go? The cup is already full. It, Yeah, that was you. Oh, yeah. I know you. 
I just saw a sneak around. So what you just saw there is a masterclass in misdirection. What you just saw there is a masterclass in routining. What you just saw there is a masterclass in how to create moments of magic that people never see coming. Now, Tommy's done lots of different versions of um, uh, Cups and Balls. In fact, I was considering at one point uh, in this video not doing the two cup and ball routine, but talking about his FISM act, which starts with like a Cups and Balls with three goblets. But I changed my mind uh, and instead I went for the two cup and ball routine. But he does lots of different Cups and Balls. Um, what's great about this particular routine, and I remember seeing this and, and just being just... The first time I saw it, I did a double take, a triple take. I thought I knew everything about magic. I thought I knew everything about performing. I was like really cocky with it. And then I saw this and I was like, okay, right, right. There's a lot that I don't know. There's a lot that I need to learn. There's a lot that I need to learn in order to get better at what I'm, what I'm doing. Because he fooled me over and over and over again. Um, and... I think if there's one thing that will work, if there's a couple of things we can learn from watching this performance. The first is the importance of throwing the rule book out the window. Like almost every single cups and balls routine that I've ever seen follows the Vernon original cups and balls routine or the Michael and Mar routine or something like that. They follow a certain sequence. They, they might de uh, deviate slightly or it might be a change in presentation. But this threw the rule book out the window. And just like Dave Williamson, um, Tommy reduced it to two cups and, uh, and, and two balls. And, you know, the use of the bag and the pom-pom, in my opinion, is one of the, the really big moments that we have here. Because the second that you've got the pom-pom and you've got the bag, and, you know, it seems like such an innocuous thing, right? I've got this bag. I'm going to take the, the, the cups out of it. I've got a routine with these cups. And then all of a sudden, the ball appears and the, the, the ball from the bag appears underneath the, the cup. Nobody ever sees that happening. And, and so the, the, the first thing is throw the rule book out the window in terms of final loads and in terms of the structure of the routine. And make it your own. You know, if you're approaching a classic piece of magic, try your absolute level best to make it your own. Um, the second thing that I would say, which is probably just as important, is think about how you can incorporate those moments of magic. Think about how you can incorporate those crazy individual moments into uh, into this, because that's what Tommy's done here. He's just taken, um, you know, he's gone, right, OK, I've thrown the rule book out the window. I want to do this. And, and rather than having a moment where everybody knows what's going to happen, they just never see it coming. And when that bag appears underneath that cup at the end, it's just crazy. I mean, from a routining and a misdirection point of view, you can learn so much from studying this routine. It's absolutely incredible. And even if you never perform this routine, you really should get the cups and learn it because it will teach you so much about the structure of a sleight of hand routine. So there you go. That's the first Tommy Wonder trick that I wanted to look at. Now we're going to look at a completely different style routine. We're going to take a look at Tommy's approach to wild card. Now, this is also a commercially available prop that you can buy. Uh, this has been marketed by Card Shark. It's called Tamed Card. Um, we're going to have a look at that right now. Uh, yeah, that was just a little thing I learned from my mother. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. It's uh... time to go. No, it, no. It's time. It's time for my hobby. Um, you don't. You don't mind. I do my hobby now. Continue the magic later. Okay. <laughs> okay just make it. Just make it. Janelle, I would like you to point to a card when I say so, not before, not after. It's a couple more seconds. I'll tell you when. Point to a card. No. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> that's good. No, that's, I mean, really, perfectly on time. No, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, uh, no, maybe I explain, uh, it's my hobby. I collect playing cards. 
which are chosen exactly at this time. So I had to put this in the show. I... <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. I have quite a collection, uh, I have quite a collection. Okay. These cards are chosen by different people, different places in the world. And you notice, it's always the four of clubs. Yeah. Always, yeah. at this time. Yeah, it's always the, yeah. I don't know why people always choose four of clubs, but the, I think there is some scientific reason for it. I don't know, but anyway, it's not so important. <laughs> <laughs> It's her birthday, not her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the thing? That's Could very well be, yeah. She wanted a princess. Yeah. But birthday or not, it's the wrong card. <laughs> no, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, uh, not even remotely does it look like it. I mean, it's, it's totally different. Okay, the back is fine. The back is fine, but... <laughs> I really love. Do you mind if I change your card to a four of clubs? I can put it in the collection. Okay. I don't mind. Ah, okay, okay. It's very simple to change a card because you just put another four of clubs on top and you rub. Yeah. If you watch carefully, it starts to imitate the four of clubs and it becomes what? It becomes a four. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, normally they do change. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh. 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 Um, you know what, um, I'll do it differently, I'll do it differently, I'll just change the collection. <laughs> huh? uh, mind you, it, it's a lot more work for me, but, but you see, the, you, 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 got a, you got a jack of diamonds, so I make jack of diamonds, you know? Now, have a look at the cards, have a look at the cards. Is there anything wrong with them? No double layers, special things or anything, no. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Because it, if you change, you know, it's it's not heat either. It is just it just changed. Now look, look here, rub rub the card. Does anything go off? Nothing goes off. No, no. But you rub like this, it changes. It changes. No, look. no, no. Wait, the last one, the last one, the last one. Look, it's really. That's crazy. Okay, so that's Tamed Cards by, uh, by Tommy Wonder. And again, there's a couple of things that I want you to, uh, to, to, that I think we can learn from, that you can pick up on. I mean, obviously it's a beautiful routine and there's lots of moments of magic and it's just amazing. But the first thing is the importance of having a hook line. I've talked about this when we talk about kids entertainers and we talk about kids shows and having a hook line for the kids. The kids get interested in what, what you're talking about. And that's very, very important. But I think it's just as important to have a hook line for um, a, a, any type of trick. And this is a perfect example. You know, the, 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 most people, when they're performing magic, there's a trick, and then there's another trick, and there's another trick. I love the fact that the alarm just goes off, and he goes, well, I'm very sorry, we'll have to do the magic later on. I need to do my hobby. And everyone's like, what? What's going on? What, what, what's this guy talking about, a hobby? And then, and then you kind of realize that he's going into another routine, but it's kind of that whole way of getting into it that's just like really off the wall. How do you grab people's attention? How do you keep people's attention during an act and during a performance? Well, you do that by varying it up. If it's like for my next trick, for my next trick, for my next trick, for my next trick, it becomes quite laborious. It becomes quite, you know, like obvious that you're going to be going into another trick and another trick. But this is a perfect example of changing that up. So think about hook lines. I mean, that's what I learned from this. Think about hook lines. The more outlandish, the better. You know, like a hook line, like, hang on, got to stop the show. Uh, it sounds stupid, right? But it's such a funny bit. It really is. Um, and it's where, actually, just so you know, it's part of the inspiration behind my future Craig routine from uh, Visible, where I speak to myself in the future. And at the end, my future self calls me. Um, that That was partially inspired by this routine and Tommy stopping the show and saying, hey, I need to do my hobby. At the end of my routine, I stop the show and I go, well, hang on a minute, I need to take this call. Um, the second thing that you can learn is again, make it, if you're doing a sleight of hand piece that's been around since time began, which basically wildcard is, um, making it your own. You know, the, the, the Tommy Wonder routine is very, very different uh, to the Peter Kane routine and any routine that had come before Tommy's at this point when he created it. And um, 
you know, if you, it, I've, I've spoken about this for years. I've been talking about this in lectures all around the UK. If you're, book, if you're, you know, doing a trick and it's a commercial trick that everybody does, think about how you can make it your own. How can you change the structure? How can you change the premise? How can you change the presentation to make it your own? That's like a really important thing to consider. Now, the next thing we're going to be looking at is going to be... Um, uh, another classic Tommy Wonder trick that I think everybody is aware of. Uh, this is another one of his signature pieces and one that, uh, you know, I remember always wanting to own, still don't own it, but always wanting to loan ever since uh, I first saw it as a kid. Uh, let's have a look at the ring, the watch and the watch. Do you all have your hands on your money yet? <laughs> huh? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. <laughs> You see, I'm not a pickpocket, I'm not a robber, I'm a magician. Okay. Actually, I've been the victim of a robber one time in Holland, in Amsterdam. This was a guy on the street and uh, he took my ring, and not only my ring, but also my watch. And finally, he took all my money, right here, except the empty wallet. I was allowed to keep it. Nice guy, huh? <laughs> I, anyway, he had all my things and he did something pretty clever. He had an envelope. And this envelope had his name and address on it. Oh. And a stamp. So basically what he did, he put all the things in the envelope. And he ran away with it and put it in a post box. So whenever the, the police comes, he has nothing on it. Right. But uh, he was a bit disappointed when the postman came. Because then he had no ring, no watch, no money, nothing at all. Yeah. Because I still had my ring, my watch, and all my money. Yeah. So Tommy wasn't the first person to approach the ring, the watch, and the wallet. And since Tommy Wonder's routine, there's been a ton of different approaches to it. Some of them have been great. You know, Vanishing Ink bought the, uh, the high star a few years ago, which is very good. Um, I think what Tommy's routine has going for it is just how fooling it is. Uh, it's not my job here to get into methodology. Anybody who's read the Tommy Wonder books or anybody who's watched his L&L &L DVD set will know how this routine's done. And more importantly, not only will they know how it's done, they'll know the length that Tommy went to to make this as deceptive as it is, which I think really aids this trick. That moment where he's got all of the pieces inside the envelope and he just rips up the envelope and throws them up in the air is a beautiful moment. Look, let's be honest, you could do this trick um, with a change bag and some extra objects. You could. You don't need to go to the trouble that Tommy went to. But sometimes going to that trouble creates an entirely different um, routine that has a much bigger impact on your audience. And I've done this in the past. I've, 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 I don't want to say half arsed it, but I've gone through the path of least resistance. You know, I've kind of uh, had arguments. I remember many, many years ago having an argument with, uh, not an argument, but a discussion with Tom Mullinger, Jester Styles, And, you know, it was at a time when he was like prepping some insane stuff to gigs. He was doing card in orange. He was doing card in Kit Kat. He was prepping a ton of stuff before every close up job. And I'm just like, why are you doing all this? Look, I can just rock up to a gig with a deck of cards and I can create the same sort of impact. You're having to sit at home for hours and put all of this stuff together. And I remember him turning around to me and he's saying, yeah, but it's worth it because the reaction that it has on the spectator is just next level. And you know, in many ways he's right. And this is exactly what Tommy Wonder's done here. What Tommy Wonder has done here is he's taken a routine that was done a certain way and he's thought it through and made it his own by completely changing the methodology and by changing the methodology made it a million times more fooling. Now, the other thing that I'd say about this routine is understanding the placement of a routine in a show. This is an opening routine. It's very quick, it's over very quickly, and there's some incredibly strong magic and it's a very simple story that's easy to follow with an interesting hook. It establishes credibility immediately. And I've spoken to people before and they've said, oh, I don't know what would make a good opening routine. What do you think would make a good opening routine? This 
is an example, in my opinion, of the perfect opening routine. So understand that a lot of the time when you're performing magic, you have to think about what your opener will be. You have to think about what your closer will be. And you have to really think about where that particular routine that you've been working on will fit in the context of a show. Um, and, and this is a perfect example of that. Right, the next uh, trick we're going to be looking at, the fourth trick is, or the fourth performance, trick is trivialising his stuff. The fourth performance we're going to be looking at is um, a card routine that I've performed for years. And I've got my own version of this on the net tricks now. Um, and I, I really want you guys to have a look at this um, because it, 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 there's some really important points to talk about with this. So let's have a look at it right now okay please would you take one of these cards just take out one yes and and remember it okay you take out one there okay and you remember the card huh it's oh sorry Jada. just just one huh? just one now, you know the card you know the card okay we'll put it we we'll put it in the deck somewhere and i would like to have your card thank you very much and we put it in the deck somewhere now i also have some magic salt and I'm going to find your card with the use of the magic salt. And what I do, when I sprinkle the salt over it, your card will do... And it will turn face up. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, what was your card, please? Uh, seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. Let's have a look. If it turned over, all right. It's a seven. Yeah, the seven of clubs. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll do the same with your card. Your card. Okay. Uh, yeah. anyway, uh, now, what was your card? Five of hearts. Five of hearts. Okay. And here is Diana's card, the five of... Oh, I don't think so. That's okay. No, that's your card, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a little mistake. I'll, I'll have to do it again. It doesn't matter. Now, so here is your card. Yeah. Oh, Too much salt. No, put it over. Put this. It, it should. No, no. It, it should. No. I'm sorry. We, we, we can't have this. This is a... Uh, you see, I, I'm sorry, this, uh, we need to find our card, otherwise it, it turns up all the time, you can't have that. Okay, uh, five of hearts, you said? Yeah, okay. Now, here it is. It's five of hearts. Ah. No. Those of you that don't know, that particular routine is called Deja Reverse, and you can learn it from the Books of Wonder and also from his l, &L DVD set, and it's an incredible routine, it really is, it's a great routine. Um, and, and I did it for years, it uses a really cool slide called the Wonder Reverse, which you all should learn if you don't know it. And I've got my own version of this now, which I say I put up on the Netflix, which uses a different slide and a different, um, slide, uh, a different sequence. Uh, but what this routine this routine is so good um and and there's a couple of things that i really want to touch on and the first is the use of the salt shaker because what we have here if the salt shaker wasn't there it's just a trick it's just a card trick it's a good card trick but it's just a card trick and what tommy's done is through the use of this salt shaker he's elevated this routine beyond the sum of its parts in essence, this is just a reversed card with a kick of finish, right? It's just a reversed card with a kick of finish. But when you take that salt shaker and you add the salt shaker into a mix, now all of a sudden it's this really funny routine. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about Alan Hudson, who was a comedy magician. Um, Tommy Wonder, not necessarily a comedy magician, but has a lot of moments of comedy in his act. But he takes a completely different approach to your normal comedy magician. By introducing props like this, but then playing it very straight, it becomes even more funny. And sometimes what you need to understand, you know, people ask me, how do you do comedy magic? Sometimes people just aren't naturally funny. You need to understand whether comedy magic is for you or not. And if it's not, that's fine. But you can still do comedy magic the same way that Tommy Wonder's doing it here by going in a different direction and still being faithful to your personality and who you are while creating funny set pieces. And that's what we have here.
The other thing that I want to talk about with this particular routine is the structure of it and how the repetition of finding the same card over and over again gets funnier and funnier and funnier and then understanding the kicker ending that brings everything full circle and understanding the structure of this routine is great when you're developing your own routines and your own tricks. Um, you know, watching Tommy do something like this is amazing. So we've left the best till last. The final routine um, it, this is part of a longer routine and I just wanted you to see the short I found a shorter version a lot of the time when Tommy used to do this he'd do a three goblet trick so he'd do something with three goblets or three cups and then he'd produce from underneath them a lemon a uh, egg and an orange and then he'd go into this particular routine um, but this is going from that point so he's bringing out a box and he's bringing out the uh, the egg the orange and the lemon if you're intrigued and you haven't seen this before, you're in for a treat. Let's have a look.
we'll call this the egg, the lemon, the orange, and the bird. <laughs> Let's call it that. Um, what a routine, right? And and I think that if there's anything that you can learn from this, it's the importance of music, and it's the importance of acting. Like he doesn't say a word. But he doesn't need to say a word. It's obvious to me that he's thought through every single moment of this act. Look at his facial expressions. Look at his the way he looks and the way he acts. He's conveying to the audience exactly what he wants them to know about everything that's happening at every point in the routine without even needing to say a word. And that's so important and the music really helps and notice how it elevates and it builds in certain sections and then drops down in other sections. You can just tell that the bird is a source of annoyance to Tommy and, and you can tell everything, his motivations and his justification behind everything, even though he's not saying anything, you can tell exactly what's going through his mind. You can tell what his internal monologue is and that's because of He's obviously thought this through. The routining behind this is brilliant. What an incredible use of a zombie-style gimmick as well. You know, making a birdcage float is just simply genius. Making a birdcage float, I mean, what's the, the, the perfect thing to float way better than a ball, in my opinion. It's just my opinion, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing else to say about this, really. Nothing else to say about this. It's it, Just watch it. Watch it three or four times and watch the structure of the routine. And watch his facial expressions, watch his mannerisms, watch how he acts, watch how he 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 conveys what he wants the audience to know. And uh, he does it without saying a word. And, and obviously the magic is super strong. The vanishes are amazing. Everything about this routine, the routining, the way from going to one part of it to the next to the next. There's no clunkiness. Everything flows from one part to the other part. And it's important that when we're putting our own acts together, we make them flow from one bit to the next bit. And this is a perfect example of why Tommy Wonder was an absolute genius. So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the uh, comments. If you want to see somebody else put on a Performer Spotlight video, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, do you like Tommy Wonder? I want to know in the comments down below. And if you want to support this channel, and I get people asking all the time how they can support the channel, go check out The Netrix, www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. I'll be back again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.